College football playoff matchups are set. We are less than three weeks away from Clemson and Ohio State. And, of course, LSU taking on Oklahoma. The Sooners, the winners of the Big 12 with one loss. LSU undefeated at 13-0, the number one team in the country, according to the College Football Playoff Selection Committee. Let's run this matchup down by the numbers here at Mark Riders TV, the voice of college football. Please like, comment, share the videos out on social media, and, of course, subscribe if you love the game that we love, college football. Here we go by the numbers, LSU versus Oklahoma. If you have any insight or information, any context that you would like to give to these metrics or have additional metrics that you think would better put into light this matchup, certainly leave your comments down in the section below. LSU's got the third highest scoring team in the nation at 47.8 points per game. Oklahoma, surprisingly, they're only giving up 24.5 points per game defensively. But that's only 50th in the nation. So there's a log jam of teams giving up roughly 25 points per game. So that statistic, I believe, is a little misleading in terms of the improvement that Oklahoma has made. It's been decided the Oklahoma defensive effort this year versus what they've performed in the recent past. LSU's worst offensive showing on the scoreboard was against Auburn, scoring just 23 points in a three-point win in Death Valley. But in that game, they did play maybe the best defensive front in college football, and they did amass over 500 yards. They've made countless mistakes in the red zone that took points off the board. For Oklahoma defensively, their two worst efforts were most likely against Kansas State, in which they were just ripped up on the ground, and at one point after taking a 10-point lead were outscored 41-6 to by the Wildcats, and then also, they almost lost to Iowa State. Uh, the Cyclones missed a two-point conversion that would have won the game. So Oklahoma won that game 42-41. Their two worst defensive efforts for the 50th scoring defense in the country against the number three scoring offense. LSU is second in the nation in pass offense. I believe that they've got the best passing offense in the nation. Statistically, just based on pure yardage, they are number two at 387 per game. Oklahoma is giving up just a tick under 200 yards per game. That's 25th best in the nation. They have improved markedly again in controlling passing games. Let's also keep in mind that Oklahoma did not face a good passing team in the non-conference schedule in taking on Houston and UCLA. Probably the three best passers that Oklahoma has faced this year would be Sam Ellinger, Charlie Brewer, Brock Purdy. I would rate them in that order. Of course, Joe Burrow is a completely different animal with those cats at wide receiver. This is lights out, best offensive passing game in college football that Oklahoma has to take on, but it's an improved unit for the Sooners. LSU has improved in the rushing game as well. Last year, they turned in their lowest yards per carry average in almost a decade. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire is a much improved running back, and the offensive line has improved its run blocking and pass blocking. If you watched the game that Joe Burrow put in against Georgia, he was scintillating, but the pass protection was amazing against a strong defensive front at Georgia. Impressively, Oklahoma is 32nd in the nation in rush defense, and that's also uh, improving week to week. Uh, most notably in containing Chuba Hubbard, one of the best running backs in the nation for Oklahoma State. He gained 79 yards in the first half at about five yards per carry, but Oklahoma shut him down and shut out the Sooners in the second half, pulling away for an 18-point win. So Oklahoma at number 32 in rush defense, LSU at number 62 in rush offense. Yards per play. Vegas tells us, our guy Steve Merrill at Pro Sports Info, who joins me each and every week to run down the betting lines, that yards per play is one of the best indicators of how good a team is. And LSU is number three in the nation in yards per play at 7.5. Oklahoma, over the past few seasons, with a leaky defense, has given up well over six yards per play. But this season, they've improved to 5.1 yards per play. So consider, if that doesn't sound like a big improvement, it is. Think of the percentages. That's per play. So if they were giving up six and a half yards per play and they're down to five yards per play, that's an improvement of like 25 to 30%. So Oklahoma is 32nd in the nation. Very respectable 
in giving up just 5.1 yards per play. LSU at number three in the nation on offense. LSU converts third downs at almost 50% at 49.7. That's number seven in the nation. And Oklahoma, once again, not one of the best in the nation, but much improved on third down defense, giving up just 31.6% conversions. That's best, 16th best in the nation. In the offensive efficiency statistic, which basically takes um, that portion of the team offense and rates how well they contribute to the overall scoring, LSU's number one in the nation, according to ESPN, at 96-plus per game. That's on a scale of 1 to 100. LSU's at 96.3. Oklahoma's defense is not bad. Number 34 in the nation, 66.2 in defensive efficiency. The special teams, not necessarily great for either team. LSU's at number 82 in the nation out of 130 FBS teams in Oklahoma, number 79. Now let's look at the Sooners on offense against the LSU defense. I talked about it all offseason, that Jalen Hurts is a top 15 to 20 quarterback in college football, but Oklahoma over the past four seasons has had arguably the best quarterback in college football in first Baker Mayfield, then Kyler Murray. So the Oklahoma offense in losing the playmakers that they had on the outside, namely Marquise Hollywood Brown and others, not as dynamic or explosive as they've been, also don't have the arm-talented quarterback with Jalen Hurts, but he's brought, obviously, a dimension of power running that Oklahoma did not have with Mayfield or Murray. The Sooners are number five in the nation in points per game at 43.2, but again, not as explosive, but they've been very consistent in generally scoring that 40 points per game, regardless of who they play. Uh, I believe that their worst scoring effort is 28 points in a four-point win against TCU. They scored 34 against Texas, 34 most recently in the last regular season game at Oklahoma State, scored 34 in the comeback win against Baylor when they were down to only scoring three points in the first half in that game. And, of course, it took overtime for them to score 30 against Baylor. So it's not a just out-of-control, amazing offense. It's a very good offense but I would rate it a tick below Ohio State, Alabama with Tua, and LSU, and Clemson. LSU defensively, the issues are being overstated. LSU is very talented defensively. They are one of the most talented defense in the nation. Not necessarily one of the best, but they're getting much better, and have shown that in recent weeks. They were ripped apart by Ole Miss in particular for over 700 yards of total offense and Vanderbilt scored 38 points against them. But take it all together, and LSU is giving up just 21.2 points per game. That's number 27 in the nation. That is good enough to win a national championship with their offense. And their two most recent efforts against very talented teams, not necessarily good offensive teams, but talented teams. Let's make the distinction. Top 5 to 15 talent against Texas A&M. LSU only gave up 7 points. And they were certainly helped out by Jake Fromm's scattershot arm in the last game, but they only gave up 10 points to Georgia. All right. Oklahoma throwing the ball, number 16 in the nation in pure yardage per game at 303. LSU gives up 221 yards per game. That's 56th in the nation. Who's the best quarterback LSU has faced? Well, it's definitely Tua Tungabailoa. And they gave up 41 points in that game and winning 46-41. They were up 33-13 third quarter and two in the tide came back. So they gave up big plays in the second half. Weren't necessarily in dire straits, but it definitely was a game. They were generally up at two scores in the fourth quarter. It did get down to one score and they won it by five. In terms of athletic quarterbacks, LSU was taking on Kellen Mond of Texas A&M. Certainly controlled him, and they did nothing. Did Texas A&M in scoring seven points. Bo Nix and Auburn scored 20 points in that game in Death Valley. Sam Ellinger, obviously, he performed the best uh, out of the other quarterbacks not named Tua in a 45-38 loss in Austin. Sam Ellinger and Texas put points on the board in that game. 38 points, not a ton of yardage, though, and we'll get to that. 
So LSU has faced, unlike Oklahoma, better quarterbacks in Tua, Mon, Nix, and Ellinger. Oklahoma running the ball, 251 yards per game. That's 12th best in the nation. LSU gives up just 120 yards per game on the ground. That's number 24 in college football. Uh, and, of course, they faced Najee Harris, also Bo Booby Whitlow of Auburn. Those are probably the two best running backs LSU has faced this season. Kylan Hill also at Mississippi State, and they shut him down. Oklahoma is number one in the nation in yards per play. And if you listened before when we were talking about the LSU offense, this is one of the great indicators of how successful a football team is because teams play at different tempos and run various numbers of plays so how much are they gaining per play and of course this has to be taken into consideration with the really good teams like the teams that make the playoffs they play a lot of blowouts so sometimes this number is a bit skewed but it is still very very telling Oklahoma at number one at 7.8 yards per play LSU's 25th in the nation in giving up just 4.9 yards per play Oklahoma is eighth best in the country in third down conversion at 49.2. LSU is number six in the nation, despite all of their defensive deficiencies and woes at one time in the season, giving up less than 30% conversion rate on third down. That's number six in college football. Oklahoma's offensive efficiency numbers at number four in the country at 90.2, and LSU defensively is number 13 in the nation in efficiency at 76.9. These two teams have one common opponent. They both played and beat Texas by seven points. The LSU win came on September 7th in Austin, 45-38, and Oklahoma beat Texas, obviously, at the State Fair in Texas, as they always play at the Cotton Bowl on October 12th. So let's get to the Sooners' win. In this game, they were out first downed by four. That was inconsequential. Oklahoma only converted three of 12 third downs against Texas into first downs, and they gave up six out of 15. But Oklahoma pretty much dominated this game in terms of moving the ball between the 20s. They outgained Texas in this game by 201 yards, but... The big stat in this one that kept Texas close was that Jalen Hurts turned over the ball twice. He threw one horrible interception in the red zone, and he also coughed it up after a long, long run downfield in which he got inside the Texas 15-yard line and coughed it up. The Oklahoma defense did not force a turnover in this game against Texas, so they were negative two in the turnover margin but still won the game by seven because they outgained Texas by 201 yards and even more telling – because Texas had the ball so much and Oklahoma scored quickly, is that Oklahoma outgained Texas per play 7.7 to 4.2. That's a huge indicator of the dominance of Oklahoma in this game. But the turnovers kept Texas in the game 34-27. Oklahoma outgained Texas on the ground, yards per carry, 7.3 to 2.8. Jalen Hurts, of course, had a big game, 16 for 28, passing for 235 yards, 131 on the ground. So, therefore, he accounted for 466 yards total offense. Kennedy Brooks had 10 carries for 105 yards against Texas defense. And Oklahoma played some defense itself in this one with nine sacks of Sam Ellinger and 15 tackles for loss. You rarely in a box score in college football see nine sacks and 15 tackles for loss. Typically, a good defensive effort, you'll see three or four sacks and seven or eight or nine tackles for loss. Oklahoma counted for nine and 15. Okay, weeks before that game was played, LSU went to Austin and beat the Longhorns 45-38 when we thought Texas was probably going to contend for the Big 12 championship. LSU was out first down in that game by two. Inconsequential. LSU, big stat in this one is they converted 6 of 12 third downs, but they gave up 8 of 15 third down conversions to Texas. That's why these two teams scored 83 points. They converted 50% plus on third down. LSU only outgained Texas by 43 yards, 
but they had the ball much less. They were scoring more quickly. Therefore, LSU gained 8.4 yards per play. But they also gave up 6.2 yards per play to Texas in winning again 45-38. LSU had one turnover, a Joe Burrow interception, and they forced no turnovers. So these defenses in playing two games against Texas couldn't force any turnovers. And uh, the rushing attack for both teams was pretty limited as LSU could only outgain Texas on the ground 3.5 to 3.3. So basically a stalemate. Joe Burrow was scintillating in this one. Again, he had the one interception, but 39 attempts, 31 completions, 471 yards, and LSU sacked Ellinger five times. That's the rundown on LSU and Oklahoma. The Tigers, despite their midseason issues on defense, are better defensively than Oklahoma, and they're more explosive on offense with a better passing quarterback who also can run and almost match Jalen Hurts as a runner. Joe Burrow's been in Extremely impressive against very talented defense in tucking the ball in and running when he needs to. LSU's a complete football team. We've heard that mentioned about Ohio State the whole season, but in watching uh, LSU address their defensive efficiencies, and there are all sorts of theories as to why they broke down on defense against inferior opponents, but we've got to take into consideration they were banged up on defense The offense was scoring at will. These defenders are not used to having an offense, number one, score 45, 50 points per game and take the pressure off them. They're used to playing in more like 24, 14 games. And also that the defenses were not used to the offense scoring so quickly that they had to jump back on the field. Now that LSU is used to that, look at the defensive efforts the last two timeouts against very talented teams, not good offensive teams, but talented teams again in giving up just seven points to Texas A&M and the 10 spot to Georgia in the SEC championship game. And the one touchdown by the Bulldogs was inconsequential. It was a blowout at that point anyway. That is Oklahoma and LSU by the numbers. We would appreciate it if you would subscribe here to Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, if you love the game that we love. And we'll be back with analysis of Ohio State and Clemson and all the bowl games. We are going to go to nuts on previewing the matchups of bowl season the playoffs recruiting's coming up national signing day on december 18th so keep it right here to mark rogers tv the voice of college football